Hey guys, it's Brenna. So today I wanted to talk about something that I think is kind of a hot topic throughout uh, the Disney community, especially the college age Disney community, and that is Disney professional internships and the application process. I have uh, spent the past few years going through this process many times. Sometimes I would go through this process and literally nothing would happen, and other times I would make it all the way to the end. And uh, most recently I made it all the way to the end and got the offer. So uh, I thought I would just sit down and kind of just talk through all of my application processes, at least the ones where I had significant movement anyway. The application process can just be really stressful and it seems to be completely different depending on the role and the position and the area you're working and the location you're working and there's just so many different factors that it's really hard to kind of figure out where you are in the process when you're applying so I thought if I just kind of broke down my different experiences it would help you guys in the future when you're applying for professional internships. So I'm going to tell three application stories here. The first is going to be my most recent one. Uh, I was hired by Disney Cruise Line as an entertainment operations intern in Orlando. The second one I'm going to talk about uh, is my experience applying for ABC internships in Los Angeles. And the last one I'm going to talk about is my experience applying for WABC internships in New York. So this past spring I started applying for uh, summer and fall 2017 internships down in Orlando. I was really trying to do something with parks and resorts and I was particularly looking for something that was like media related or marketing related or entertainment related. I probably ended up applying for about like 15 or so positions. The earliest I sent out an application was probably like late December and then the latest would have been like mid-February I'd say maybe early March, depending on the position. I only actually made significant movement with one of those positions, and that's the one I got, so that was Disney Cruise Line Entertainment Operations. The other ones I would move into, uh, either stay in submission the entire time or move to in progress and then eventually get NLIC'd. So for Disney Cruise Line, I sent in my initial application on February 9th. On February 16th, my dashboard changed from submission to in progress. But then I didn't hear anything for a very long time, like literally nothing. I was slowly getting declined from all the other ones, but Disney Cruise Line was like hanging in there, staying strong. At some point, a bunch of people on Facebook started saying that they were getting declined and I was still in progress. So I was like, okay, this must be a good sign. And then uh, out of the blue on April 12th, I got a phone call. I was literally sitting in class and Disney Cruise Line popped up on my phone. So I like ran out of class, took the call and it was actually the manager from the entertainment operations department calling me and offering me an interview. So uh, obviously I accepted. I ended up having my interview on April 17th and it was a blue jeans interview and it was a panel interview so it was the woman who had called me as well as three of her people that's not the right word but you know what I mean so it was three people that were also on the entertainment operations team and all four of them together uh, interviewed me at the same time which was kind of stressful they were all asking me very different and very specific questions the whole thing lasted like 30 minutes I was definitely uh, very difficult, I'm not gonna lie, it was probably one of the hardest interviews I sat through just because there were so many different questions coming at me and it was just like, you know, kind of switch gears really fast just because there were so many different people and it's hard to have four different people stay on the same mind track, if that makes sense, but finished the interview. So after my interview on April 17th, I just had to keep waiting. I was told in my interview that I'd hear back in one to two weeks, but that did not end up happening. So on April 24th, my dashboard changed again and I moved from uh, in progress, which is where it had been even throughout my interview stage, and it changed to post interview stage. I got really excited because for a lot of roles I'd heard that post interview stage meant that you got the offer and they were just gonna call you soon, but I had also heard from other people that sometimes they would go to post interview stage and then get declined. So I went on Facebook and I was talking to a couple of the other girls that had also been interviewed and none of them went into post interview stage. So I kind of had a good feeling about it, but I still like days were going by and I wasn't hearing anything. So eventually I kind of just like gave up and assumed that I just didn't get it. And then finally on May 10th, I again got a spontaneous phone call and this time it was from a recruiter who called me and gave me the offer. So I was really excited. I was totally thrown off because at that point it had been almost a month since my interview, so I really didn't think I got it. But I got it and now I'm heading off to Orlando in August. That's another thing I want to talk about. So the original application said that the position was going to be from May until January, but I think due to financial issues they ended up hiring me from August to January just 
I guess they couldn't afford to have an intern all summer, so I get to start delayed, so that's something that can happen. Things can change based on what is listed in the application. So yeah, I just thought that whole process was really different compared to what I'd hear, heard from other people that had internships in Orlando. I didn't have a phone screening at all, and then on my phone, it, my uh, phone calls were never scheduled. Like, instead of scheduling my Blue Jeans interview over email, they called me, and then my offer, like, usually people will get an email from the recruiter asking to, like, set up a short call, and he just, like, flat out called me, probably because it was kind of so late that he just wanted to get it over with, I'm guessing, so I'm glad I was there to answer the phone, but yeah, that's, moral of this story is uh, always have your phone on you, make sure your voicemail is set up, and I guess just be prepared to answer your phone at any time, because you never know when Disney's calling you. Okay, so the next topic is going to be when I applied for uh, ABC internships in Los Angeles. I was specifically applying for these ones because I spent a semester studying in Los Angeles, and I am a television major, so I really wanted to work for ABC. So those applications came out around mid-July. I ended up applying for about 12 of them, I would say, and that all happened probably end of July, early August. I flew out there about mid-August, and at that point I had like some were in submission, some were in progress, hadn't really heard anything, and then on August 17th I received an email from a Disney recruiter who wanted to set up a phone screen with me. And that happened really fast. She sent me the email and uh, there was like a link to click on that you could schedule interview times, and I actually ended up setting my screening for the next day. So August 18th I had my phone screening, and we basically talked about all of the internships that I applied for. It didn't matter if I was in submission or if I was in progress, we just basically talked through every single role. We talked a lot about my past experience with other internships I've had, uh, the things I did at school with my school's television station, and just kind of all the experience I had. And then on top of that, we kind of went through uh, the positions that I was most interested in and the positions that I fit into best. So uh, by the end of the conversation, we kind of had like a list of three to five uh, positions that were best suited for me. And she was like, all right, um, so this is, I got all the information I need from you. I'm going to start talking to the hiring managers from all these different internships that you applied for. And if someone's interested, uh, you'll get an email in two, one to two weeks asking for an in-person interview. So on August 29th, I received my first email for an interview offer, and this actually came from the same recruiter that I had the phone screen with. So ABC, uh, ABC Entertainment uh, Specials, some, it was like ABC Entertainment like Specials and pro Special Programming, something like that. Basically, it was the department of ABC that handled all of the unscripted shows and like reality shows that the network produced. Uh, so they wanted to set up an interview with me. I had the option to do both in-person or blue jeans, and since I was already in LA, I opted for the in-person interview. So uh, a different recruiter ended up reaching out to me to schedule that, and I was headed off to the ABC building on August 29th. That was a really cool experience because the ABC building is on the Walt Disney Studios lot, so I got to go on the Walt Disney Studios lot. ABC's kind of tucked in the corner, so I didn't get to see that much, but I was still like freaking out that I even got to go there. But the interview went pretty fine. I don't think I was prepared, I'll be honest. Uh, the two women that interviewed me were super nice, but I just, I don't think I showed the right passion for the kind of television that they were making, which was my own fault for not coming in, because they asked, they did ask me questions like, you know, what kind of TV shows do you watch and why do you want to work for reality TV? What do you think makes reality TV so special? And I was not prepared to answer that and I think that really hurt me. So obviously I ended up not getting that one. I think I heard back on, yeah, September 13th, I got an uh, email from my recruiter, uh, a personal email from my recruiter just saying that I was a strong candidate, but they were going with someone else. So that was a nice thing about this process though, is that when I did get rejection letters, they weren't just like, the NLIC basic email that you would get, I actually got it straight from my recruiter that I'd been working with, which is super nice because, you know, I, when you get as far as the interview process, it's nice to kind of feel like appreciated, even though you didn't get the internship. But we're going to backtrack again. So I had that interview on August 31st, and then on uh, September 1st, I actually heard back again from my recruiter saying that Freeform uh, Production Management was also interested in interviewing with me. So I set up another interview, and it was a totally different recruiter again that I had never worked with before. So this interview was September 9th, and again, it was in person. It was in a different building, though. Freeform and Disney Channel have their own building that's outside of the ABC building. So again, went to that in-person interview. That one went a little better. I interviewed with like the, he the head production manager and then two other women that I think... One of them was like the, also a production manager, and one of them was more with the post-production department, but also it was kind of... would 
be someone I interacted with on that internship had I gotten it. And this one went a lot better. It was definitely some of the same questions about like television and why you like working for television and what you want to learn and what you want to do. But this one was tricky because the uh, the timing they wanted me there just wasn't going to work with my schedule. It was five days a week part-time, so you had to be there four hours a day, five days a week, which I couldn't do because at that point I had already accepted another internship. That was going to be uh, two to three times a week, and I couldn't. There was just like no way to do both, and then we tried to talk about how I could fit in, and it just didn't work. So on September 29th, I actually finally got the rejection from that one. And again, it was a personal email from my recruiter, which was super nice, just saying like, hey, again, you're a strong candidate. Unfortunately, though, they went with someone else. And then the nice thing, though, was at the end of that email, she was like, if you're ever applying for other internships in the future, reach out to me. Let me know what you're applying for so I can help you. So that was super cool because I did end up reaching out to her this past season and just letting her know like, hey, I just applied for some internships, at parks and resorts. Don't know if having her see that was helpful or not, but she did respond back and, you know, put a good word in for me. So that was definitely probably the best part of that recruiting season. Even though I interviewed for two positions that I didn't get, I was able to make a really good connection with the recruiter. So still worked out in the end. And I actually, uh, that semester, I got a really good internship with NBC Universal. So crossed over to the dark side, but it was a really good experience. And it was kind of like a breath of fresh air just trying a different company. Okay, so the last interview process I want to talk about is uh, my process with WABC TV. So WABC is the ABC local affiliate station for the New York area. So it's based in New York City and it covers like all the tri-state area. If you don't know what an affiliate station is, an affiliate station is basically like the local branch of a network. So ABC, we have like ABC New York, we have probably like ABC Philadelphia, and there's a bunch of different locations where they have their own branch so they can cover local news. So ABC in New York offers internships summer, fall, and spring. However, their application process is completely separate from the Disney Careers website, and it's actually all run by them through their own website. But at the same time, it is still considered a Disney professional internship. So that was cool. The process is a lot easier and a lot better organized, in my opinion. I think because they're just dealing with a lot less people since it's only like one chunk of the company at once. It's also important to know that uh, this one is meant for more local people. So people that live in New York or the tri-state area worked out for me because I'm from New Jersey. So to start this application, it's actually a Word document that you just kind of fill out and ask like your information for school. You can write down all the classes you've taken that are relevant to the positions you're applying for. You write, instead of a cover letter, you just write like a paragraph of why you're interested in interning there. And you have to pick two positions or up to two positions that you are interested in. So there was probably about like 10 or 12 and you were able to apply for two. So I applied for Live with Kelly and Michael and then Operations and Specials. So on March 28th, I got an email from HR. I actually got two emails, one saying that I got an interview with Live with Kelly and Michael and one saying I got an interview for Operations and Specials. Now the way they do their interviews is kind of different. So what they do is have like a interview, like intern recruitment night at ABC Studios in New York. So Everyone is interviewing at the same time. We're in one of the commissaries in ABC. This occurred on April 6th, so that night, me and, you know, hundreds of other hopefuls all lined up at ABC Studios, and then you get there and you check in, and there's different tables for each of the positions that you're applying for. So I got there and I first went over to the Live with Kelly and Michael side. I had to fill out another like quick form just about my availability and whatnot. And then one of the production assistants led me to another table and I sat down and turns out it was a producer and all of a sudden the interview was happening. I wasn't expecting the interview to just kind of happen in this commissary with everyone around, but that's how they do it. So I sat down with the producer. We just talked really briefly. It was probably like a five minute interview. She just kind of like walked through my resume a little bit wanted to hear about my experience, wanted to know why I wanted to work for Live with Kelly and Michael, and it went really well because she was like, yeah, I'm gonna put in a good word for you. It's not my decision to make the final decision, but I'm putting in a good word for you. So that was pretty awesome. After that, I went to check in for my second interview. This was for operations and specials, and this was a group interview. So sat down with the woman who headed that department, and it was me and two other people who were interviewing. She asked us both only like one or two questions. It was really quick as well. Because I had gotten there early, I got to do my interviews pretty fast. I was in and out of there in like an hour, which was super nice. And then the waiting game began. So I ended up finally 
hearing back on April 20th and I actually got a phone call and it was a phone call giving me an offer to work with Live with Kelly and Michael which was super super exciting. Yeah I got the phone call it was again like an unscheduled unplanned thing didn't know they were gonna call me and yeah that's <laughs> obviously I accepted. By the time I started working there it was no longer Live with Kelly and Michael it was Live with Kelly but I spent the summer it was a part-time internship in New York working for the show and I had an absolute blast. But like I mentioned before, one of the greatest things about that was I was working for the local station, but I still was considered a professional intern. So I was actually invited to go to all of the different professional interns events that all the regular ABC interns also got to go to. So it was a really awesome opportunity that I got. It kind of got the best of both worlds. I got a taste of working for a local station, but also got to participate with all of the um, ABC interns that were in New York. So yeah, I hope hearing my story is going to help some of you guys with your application processes in the future. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a comment or you can hit me up on Twitter, or Instagram, Facebook, whatever. All my links will be down there. Also, if there's any other videos you want to see about professional internships, also just drop those in the comments. I'm going to be uh, vlogging and recording my entire experience with my professional internship once I get down to Florida, so definitely subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. But yeah, other than that, I think that's all I have for this video, so uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye.